Hi everyone and welcome back to Faith in Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin and I have got some ultimate cleaning motivation for you today. We are going to be cleaning in the kitchen, in the bathroom. I'm gonna be showing you a recipe at the end of the video. And I'm also going to be showing you some hacks for cleaning with vodka. If you guys have been watching me for long, you will know that I have a disinfecting cleaning spray that I make myself using vodka. I used to use rubbing alcohol. You can substitute that for this recipe and I'll have the full recipe in the description box below. Basically, it contains vodka, distilled water, a little bit of Castile soap, and then some essential oils. I use this disinfecting spray to clean almost every surface in our home, with the exception of our wood furniture. And I like adding this Defender Essential Oil. It is from Simply Earth, and I'll have a link for that below as well in the description box. But it has antibacterial and antiviral properties, so along with the vodka, it really zaps all of those cold and flu germs that we are fighting this time of year. I love using this to clean our tub and I like spraying it on and then leaving it for just a little bit so it can start breaking down any buildup in there. Using this spray is also my favorite way to clean the exterior of the toilet. I also spray it down really thoroughly, let it sit for a little bit to do its job, and then for the interior of the toilet, I like using the Method Anti-Back Toilet Cleaner. And I do the same for that. I spray it in there and let it sit for a bit. And while we're waiting, I'm gonna show you some really cool hacks for using the vodka that you've purchased to make this disinfecting spray. I keep an extra glass bottle filled with just straight vodka for doing tons of different things around our home. By the way, these glass bottles come from the Grove Collaborative. I love them, and of course I have a link for you in the description box. Every few months when I'm changing the sheets on our bed, I like to spray down our mattress with a mist of vodka. It's a really great odor eliminator. You can also add a few drops of your favorite essential oil to scent it, and it works better than any of the commercial odor eliminators such as Febreze, and it's all natural. If you have ever come home from a night out and your clothes smell like smoke or like the restaurant where you had your dinner, this is a great way to eliminate those odors without a trip to the dry cleaners. Just lightly spray and let dry. You can use this spray all over your home, on your furniture upholstery, on your carpet. It even eliminates bad smells inside shoes. If your towels ever have a funky smell or your laundry because you left it in the washer overnight, you can just add a half a cup of vodka to the wash load, run it one more time, and those odors will be gone. I like using my disinfecting spray or just straight vodka all over the house on those areas where we touch really often because these are the areas where we are likely to spread cold and flu germs, other icky viruses. So wiping each of those things down with this vodka is a great way to get rid of those yucky germs. Something that I have been doing for years is cleaning my rings and other jewelry in vodka. I just take them off in the evening, let them soak in a small glass, and in the morning, I just wipe them dry. If they're really dirty, you can go in with a soft toothbrush and scrub the settings and different places where dirt gets caught, but the vodka is beautiful at shining them up and getting them sparkly clean. Thank you. 
I love cleaning my eyeglasses with vodka. I heard this tip years ago and it works like a charm. If you have special coatings on your glasses that alcohol is not safe for, then this would not be a good solution. So make sure you check before using it. Straight vodka can be used as a great streak-free cleaner for mirrors, windows, any glass surface. I get a lot of questions about what to do if you have water spots in your shower, on the glass, or on the fixtures, and vodka can be a great way to clean those as well. If your water spots have been there for a long time, you might want to spray the surface, let it sit for a while, maybe repeatedly, and then wipe it down. On things like fixtures, you can soak a cloth in vodka and lay it over the fixture. That will also help. The reason why I choose vodka for this job over vinegar is because vodka is completely safe for natural stone, whereas vinegar is not. If you guys know of any great uses for vodka, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. Now that the disinfecting spray has had a chance to kill all the germs on the surface of the toilet, I will wipe everything up with a dry paper towel. You can use a microfiber cloth or a cotton cloth if you don't mind washing those. I just like to toss it in the trash when I'm finished. Toilet paper also works, but I do find that that can leave some lint behind. Leaving the anti back toilet cleaner to do its job inside the toilet really helps as well, and so I just can do a quick scrub and be finished. Leaving the spray on inside the bathtub also helps loosen up all the dirt and makes it really easy to remove. And I'm just using one of the E-Cloth Fresh Mesh pads to clean the bathroom today. It basically works the same as a microfiber cloth. It's a little bit more absorbent and holds a little bit more water. And it also dries very quickly. So it's great to leave in the kitchen or the bathroom. You can use them multiple times before you need to clean them. And then you can just put them in the washing machine and they come out good as new. I like to dry the shiny surfaces in our bathroom, like the fixtures and the mirrors, with an e-cloth window polishing cloth. This gives it a great streak-free shine and doesn't leave any lint behind.
And now it's time to start dinner. So I'm gonna show you guys a really easy recipe. I spoke about it in a previous video and it is a vegetable pasta dish that is super easy. It's kind of a one pot meal. And I talked to you guys about the way I like to do my meal planning, which is basically to shop first, find all of the fresh ingredients and then figure out the recipes afterwards. So having a dish like this in your repertoire is great because you can switch up the vegetables in a ton of different ways and use basically any produce that looks extra fresh and good at the store. Tonight I'm using fresh green beans, mushrooms, and shallot. The only prep I have to do is to prepare the vegetables and so I'm trimming the green beans and then I'm also snapping them in half. I'm planning on using some penne pasta so I kind of like to have the vegetables in sort of bite-sized pieces. And after this I will chop up some mushrooms and a shallot and I will show you how I assemble this. I love using sun-dried tomatoes in this dish and these are from Trader Joe's and they are packed in olive oil. This is about an eight ounce jar and I use about half a jar so that's four ounces and I just use the oil right along with it so that I don't add any extra olive oil to this dish. To that I will put in the shallot and let them saute for a few minutes until the shallots are starting to soften up. Next I put in the green beans and I also like to add a little bit of seasoning and that kind of changes from time to time depending on what I'm in the mood for. Tonight I'm using a little bit of dried oregano and dried basil. And if you have fresh, that's even better. I also add a little bit of salt at this point. You guys, I am loving having my spices here in this drawer next to the stove. I wish that I had thought of doing this years ago. After the seasonings, I mix in the mushrooms and then I will put the lid on and let the vegetables steam for a little bit longer. And this changes depending on the vegetables that I'm using as well. Sometimes I'll use spinach or some other quick cooking vegetable and then I don't need to let it cook as long, but I wanna make sure that the green beans have a chance to soften. Then I add in some Marsala wine. And if you don't like cooking with alcohol, I want to encourage you to give it a try. All of the alcohol is cooked out and it adds such a depth of flavor to this dish that just cannot be matched with anything else. If you're totally dead set against it, you could use some stock of some sort, either vegetable or chicken or something like that, but it is going to be so much better if you just give the Marsala wine a try. You could also use some white wine or sherry. And here's the really naughty but delicious part of this recipe, and that is adding whipping cream. And so this is eight ounces, so about a cup. I get this one from Trader Joe's. It is in a Tetra brick, which means that it's ultra pasteurized and it can be left on the shelf for a number of months. And so I like having this on hand, especially for this dish. And you can definitely use fresh cream, or if you really want a plant-based meal and you don't want to have any cream in it, but you still want that delicious creamy consistency, you can make a cashew cream. So if you just Google cashew cream, you'll get the recipe for that. But it's basically just just taking raw cashews, soaking them overnight, and then pureeing them along with some water and you get a beautiful cream-like consistency for this sauce as well. Just combine your cooked pasta with your sauce and we like to use Barilla gluten-free pasta. That's our favorite brand. It's made of brown rice and corn. And then I like to serve it topped with some grated Parmesan cheese. I will link my recipe in the description box below if you guys want measurements. But like I said, this is something that I make all the time and I rarely actually measure things. I just toss it in, whatever vegetables I have. And I sort of eyeball the pasta too. I make sure that I have more vegetables than pasta and that makes this a one pot meal that is very healthy.
after dinner, everyone helps me clear the table and then they put their own dishes in the dishwasher, which is a huge help. Anything that I don't want to put in the dishwasher, I will wash by hand. Tonight after dinner, the dishwasher is full, so I'm going to run it and then I can empty it in the morning. It doesn't work out this way every night. I tend to make sure that the dishwasher is full before I run it because I think that's the most efficient thing. And then I'm just going to use my e-cloth that is dampened with just water to wash down the countertops and the stove. last thing I'm going to do tonight is to wash out my sink and I have a recipe for a DIY cream cleanser which I've shown you guys before I will make sure to put that in the description box for you as well and it looks like I'm just about out of it so I need to make myself some more
clean, I am going to call it a day and join my family in the living room to watch a movie together and just relax. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope that it gave you lots of cleaning motivation to tackle some areas in your home. And I hope you got some great new tips about how to use vodka in a ton of different ways. If you like the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel. And if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. It's free and totally easy. Just click on my picture. And if you guys want to see more videos, make sure you click on the video icons to watch more. Thank you guys for spending your time with me today. I really look forward to seeing you in the comments and in the next video. Have a great week.